Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Catherine Farrow, also known as the lovely Lady Liberty. I'm being interviewed right now by Keith Andrew on his Keith and Andrew Network podcast. I am so grateful for, for this, this uh, collaboration. He is a true inspiration to myself and to my network uh, as well. And I look forward to all upcoming opportunities to get to know him better. The whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a learning disability, I can style them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them and style them out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and this is episode 1087. That is right, 1087. We're this close to reaching our goal. Now, the following is brought to you by 1987, and as it, we are getting, getting close to the 40th anniversary of the World Wrestling Federation, World Wrestling Entertainment 40th anniversary of WrestleMania. Definitely watch it on Peacock. Go to WWE.com. 40 years of WrestleMania. But we're talking about episode 87. So we're going to go back in time to 1987. The question I want to ask you is, what were you doing in 1987? Oh, in 1987, I was 10 years old. So I was probably <laughs> playing laser tag. Actually, yes. I was living in New Orleans and playing laser tag uh, in a house we lived in off of Napoleon, Napoleon Avenue. And uh, I'm the oldest of five girls. Oh, nice. So you have a big family. Yes, very big family. <laughs> and uh, it takes me back, actually. I'm glad that you brought me there. That was a good time. No, it absolutely. really was. My well, I'm saying absolutely, like, obviously I was there, but it, but your face lit up. So, I mean, absolutely, because you seem excited about it. Yeah, you took me to a good place. Thanks for the good vibes. No, absolutely. I was born in 1988. That will be in my later episode. Uh, but, you know, for people who like, do you like professional wrestling? I do, actually. And, you know, I was just thinking recently, uh, Ric Flair actually came through town. Uh, he was promoting some stuff. But I was thinking about Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and Ric Flair and all those guys, you know, the the old school guys of wrestling. You know, they're, they're still actually doing a lot these days uh, in and outside of, you know, the wrestling ring. Um, uh, I know that uh, personally, I know a lot of wrestlers who are doing some amazing things for uh, true talent, true athletic talent, uh, and, you know, uh, personality-wise, too. Uh, there are some really interesting people who are using their gifts in multiple ways, you know, through sports and entertainment. Are you friends with them, or you just know of them? Oh, no, I'm friends with a lot. Oh, like Ric Flair? I mean... Hulk Hogan and all them, I've never met them or anything, but uh, in the many years of MMA uh, and cage fighting that I've done, I've actually gotten to know a lot of up and coming uh, wrestling talents and uh, people from the old school who have opened their own gyms and such. Hey, well, the first question I want to ask you while we're talking about your MMM career, <laughs> MMA career, you know, yeah. have you won any championships and who are the up and coming people that you know of? Well, okay, I've never won a belt, if that's what you're asking. But I can honestly and confidently say that uh, all through my AMI career, all the way into my pro career, um, the majority of my fights were actually against title holders. And uh, a few of my first fights were against people that actually held a belt. And I had some title shots. So I went for them. I've never really been afraid of fighting um, in real life. Unfortunately, one of my closest uh, MMA friends and also opponents, Katie Collins, I 
I try not to think too much about it. She's actually passed away, but uh, I went pro at the same time she did, and we fought each other twice as pros. Oh, that's really cool. One question I want to ask you, not to piss you off. No, but go ahead. Why didn't you win any belts? Did you tell them that I want to be champion? Or was it just people have a certain look and is, and, and is, so you're catering to a certain audience? So the, the question I was actually wanting to ask you, it's, yeah. it's actually number three on the list, but I actually like this question. For MMA career, why didn't you ever win a championship? And did he ever have conversations about that? Oh, you know what? I really like your question. Um, no, um, you know, I didn't win any championships or belts, um, but I have won many, many fights. In fact, I've had so many fights over the years. I don't even know how many fights I've had. But I have enjoyed every last bit of it. And not everyone's reasons for fighting is the same. For instance, um, my, my sports and entertainment network was what I was truly focused on, bringing people together so that people could have a platform in the sports and entertainment industries. And since 2009, I've been growing uh, these networks and communities all over the U.S. And it really has taken a lot of time, but it's been a labor of love. And I can I can confidently also say that I have helped co-promote multiple fight promotions over the years because of how much dedication I gave to the business itself. Um, I love being an event coordinator, a fight promoter, an event promoter. I enjoy bringing people together. I host socials to do just that and uh, find ways that we can all come together and be seen and be inspirations to uplift our community. And it, it also helps like charity wise. And that's where my heart is with children. In fact, my partner, uh, Jason Reinhardt, uh, he's the ex-UFC fighter I told you about. Uh, he's got a big heart for children. And we are using our platforms together, Sweet Liberty uh, Productions and Courage Fighting Championship, uh, coming together to promote fighters and entertainers with clean blood work on the fight cards completely certified fight cards and um, a place where they can showcase their talents. And that's with film, the film industry, um, uh, the sports industry. And also I have been working with so many stunters, motorcycle stunters, stunters, and numerous other types of talent. And even in the, the tech side and sound and lighting, I'm able to find, you know, a uh, use for everybody. And a lot of my fighters, I give them a lot of props and, and support. Some of them uh, can get voiceover gigs, as funny as that seems, or some of them are really smart tech wise. And I try to promote their other talents. So, you know, we don't fight until the day we die. We, we be a mess. We, we, you know, have broken everything <laughs> head to toe because it's a brutal sport. Um, so we need something to fall back on and use our talents for. And that was my passion. And I'm, I'm really grateful that I've had so much experience and brought so many people together. Um, I really have a heart though, like I said, with Jason for children, we try to help with, uh, life sustaining, uh, uh, things such as breathing machines and prosthetics and medicine, medical care, anything that we possibly can. And these are just different ways that we try to be an inspiration and beacon in our communities. Well, if you're interested, I would have loved to work with you. I would love that. I would love to so much. I think between our two communities, we could actually do a lot. And that's another reason why I'm grateful to call you one of my peers. Yeah, I appreciate it. Now, as I had sort of mentioned this in my first interview that I did today, there's like one more I have to do. I'm say there's one, I think two more I have to do later on today. It's oh, wow. Women's Heritage Month. And I just want to say thank you for being an inspiration. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're an inspiration to me. Well, that works out, right? <laughs> the question, next question I want to ask you 
is I'm not crazy about MMA. I mean, it's a sport, and I think MMA could be better. But let me ask you something. As a woman in MMA, do you think women should be in the main event, number one? And how would you feel about MMA or UFC, for that matter, creating women's world tag team championships instead of being well i'm the toughest fighter and i'm the toughest fighter why not make a tag team title and have two tough fighters Oh my goodness, that's that's pretty interesting. I think that would be pretty wild. I think a lot of people would like to see that for sure. And as far as women being main events, the majority of the fight cards that I was on, I was actually a, a main event or a co-main event. And yes, we absolutely do belong there. No, I agree. There's no, absolutely no reason why women can't be in the main event. WWE actually... Let's see, like, I think it was a year ago or two years ago where they had two um, black athletes made invented on uh, WrestleMania, and now it's absolutely amazing because they made history. You know, I think it was um, Blanca and Belair yeah. and uh, Sasa Banks, and they were in the main event of WrestleMania on night one, and they deserve it. There's no, absolutely no reason That's why they right. can't. That's awesome. Oh, that's a great example that you brought up, actually. And the next question I want to ask you, how do you feel about blood and MMA? Well, I've had a lot of it. I've had <laughs> it come from me. I've had it on me. Oh, that brings me to a great story. So one of my fights as, as an AMI before going pro, there was a girl who I fought, Maritza Reyes. And um, she came out swinging. And it's the only time that I'd ever really gotten injured in a fight. I've never really been injured in any of the fights over the years. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but she broke my nose. A lot of people don't notice, but not until I say something. But my nose is actually broken. And I'm kind of polite. And, uh, and I know that fighting seems brutal but I'm always polite and I am happy and I have a good heart but while I was actually um, in a ground and town uh, beating her um, I actually was bleeding from the nose and I didn't want to bleed on her and I leaned over and went hmm on the <laughs> mat and said I'm sorry <laughs> instead of bleeding on her and then and then the ref grabbed a towel after that round and wiped it up um Honestly, I don't like getting shots, even though we go through all kinds of blood tests and stuff when we fight. Um, that's important. In fact, that's one of the things Jason and I are very uh, serious about. Okay. Okay. So blood. Yes. <laughs> um, I have a lot to say about blood. Actually, being an MMA fighter, if I'm getting uh, my if, – if I'm giving blood for the blood panels that I have to take for fights – I'm honestly pretty queasy about that. I I won't lie. I actually start sweating and I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, somebody catch me. But um, when it comes to actually being in the cage, I'm actually really polite about blood. And in fact, um, I'm I'm try to be uh as graceful as I possibly can. And there's this one fight with Maritza Reyes when I was in Amy before going pro, where she actually broke my nose. A lot of people don't notice till I say something, but my my nose is actually broken. So I've I've actually been injured. Um, that's the worst thing that's ever happened though in the cage. But I am uh, I'm okay with that kind of blood, um, as long as it's not coming from a, a needle. Uh, the nose issue wasn't an issue. Um, but what was funny about that is during the fight, I didn't want to bleed on her because I mean it's gross, right? Um, so. During the fight, I leaned over and I went hmm, like that, and I I blew blood on the ca on the cage mat instead of on my opponent. I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me." In the middle of fighting, um, it was pretty wild. I was in the middle of a ground and pound, and I was more concerned about my opponent getting my blood on her than I was anything else. And I remember the ref laughing, and then you know after the round was over, he got a towel and cleaned it up. 
Um, but also my partner and I, Jason Reinhardt, the ex UFC fighter I told you about, um, he owns courage fighting championship. And that's what we're, we're also working on right now. Um, but he and I care a lot about, uh, having a platform where fighters don't have to worry about clean blood panels. Um, it's really important, uh, that we have clean bu- blood panels and, uh, certified sanctioned fight cards uh, for our fighters and he's got well over 50 plus fight cards that he's promoted over the, over the years and we noticed that in different communities um not everyone supports that not everyone you know enforces that and we can't have that at any level pro or ami we need clean sanctioned certified fight cards and safety for the fighters and for everyone involved so, you know, the subject of blood is actually pretty important to me. <laughs> no, I agree. And I know like in WWE used to have blood all the time. And all of a sudden it's PG. And let me explain you back in the 80s of the Hogan era, Bret Hart era, Michaels and The Undertaker. It didn't matter, but it was PG. We get Ric Flair uh, busts himself open just for the hell of it. So does McFoley. Uh, yeah. But, it's people are like, I don't get that, that wusses. It's kind of like the, the fact that what changed? It's like now if someone gets busted open, they have to stop the match and put the gloves on or they turn colors to black and white. And it's kind of like if you're telling a story, then it's fine. You know, don't you know, be a freaking wuss about it. It's like, oh my god, he's bleeding. We have to stop the match. It's kind of like, yes, you, and that goes back to my next question. You know, being a, a producer, how hard is it catering and building to the right audience? Because you want to cater to the hardcore fans, and it doesn't matter if it's PG, and it doesn't matter if it's a rated M or mature or whatever. And, you know, it's it's just blood, big deal. It's not like, oh, my God, you got to go freaking Mortal Kombat. I need to go be blood for shooting, uh, shooting everywhere. And so you have like a cut in this in blood, no big deal. But that's the fact that you go out of their way and act like wusses about it. And I get it. Um, some sponsors, you know, I, I don't know, for an example... Uh, bounty <laughs> or uh, Cheetos and some sponsors say well if you're going to have blood again we're not going to support you so I yes you I, I say you go where the money goes so if Bounty and Cheetos or Playstation or whatever the hell it is says you've got to have blood we're going to pull our sponsors so it's I mean you have you know what I mean? It's it's kind of like... I do. I do know what you mean. Actually, you know what? Um, there's a reason why we cage fighters do what we do. And there's a lot that goes with that. This is something we live. We literally sweat and bleed for what we do. And some people... That might seem gory, but for us, it's a part of who we are. It's our spirit. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, It's what speaks to other people. And if it's real, if it's not made up, then you can see real life taking, taking shape right in front of you. Where we get to find out exactly who we are and what we're made of. And it's a good thing, and people are inspired by that. Um, if as I may, as, I didn't I'm mean sorry. to that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? I was going to say, if I may, is MMA scripted? No. I mean, no. No. It's not scripted. <laughs> Definitely not scripted at all. I mean, I've never had somebody tell me this is what's going to happen in my fight. I have a plan for my fight. And sometimes it goes the way I envision, and sometimes it doesn't. And you never know which way a fight is going to go, which is also really exciting and exhilarating and part of why I love what we do. 
No, I and, agree. Um, when you mentioned the thing about sponsors, I am so grateful for every sponsor that I've ever worked <laughs> with. And I have been blessed with amazing sponsors. And, you know, over the years, since 2009, I have nurtured my relationships with the different people who have helped to make these, these opportunities, these platforms happen. And I don't really worry about going where the money is because if the thing you're doing is a blessing, people are going to see that and they're going to want to be a part of it. Excuse me. And you know what else? <laughs> um, I feel that the majority of people go with, with the right decision, blood wise or not. I mean, if they're worried about catering to a certain, a certain group of people, maybe they have weak stomachs, you know, and, and I empathize. Um, I don't think anybody's a wuss per se. Um, there are some people like myself, you know, like I said, I get kind of queasy when they pull out the needle and say, I need your <laughs> blood for this fight. Um, but everybody's got their own reasons. And, but if you don't want to watch these things, you don't have to, um, and again, I'm not going to say that you're a wuss because you don't, you, because it bothers you. I respect that. Um, it isn't for everyone, but for me, it has changed my life and I'm grateful. And I think that in itself is an inspiration to a lot of people. No, I agree with you. I don't mean to sound like a wrestling mark. I'm not. You're <laughs> not at all. Me, These are great questions, honestly. Let me ask you this. If... As you know, MMA, it's like what rated 14. It's not rating but mature because when they do, when you do curse, they bleep you out. <laughs> yeah. well, let me ask you a funny question. Okay. If MMA was PG, do you think it would suck? Or do you think it would be interesting? Well, it depends on what, what you mean by PG. Honestly, oh. PG <laughs> has blood. PG yeah. has certain amounts of violence and you get both with that you know just it's so, fun it's funny because uh, in dragon ball because when i was on cartoon network it had blood in it and um so in nickelodeon when nickelodeon purchased the rights to air dragon ball they changed the blood to spit so and someone recently said you know what? that's even worse <laughs> than having blood but yeah. does MMA have to have blood? I mean, why or kickbox? I mean, kickboxing's fine. How I see it, it's kickboxing, fighting, wrestling, and it's great. But does the fact that you you're constantly being the crap at person, they're all bloody. Couldn't you do that? Not to sound like an idiot. It's I mean, I'm looking. If you were catering it to kids. Yeah. How would you cater that audience, but at the same time, you don't want it to water down and kind of not really turn off the hardcore fans, if that makes any sense, because there are it hardcore does. MMN fans. Yeah, well, I have a lot to say about that, too. Go ahead. Blood happens. <laughs> It happens when you're riding your bike. It happens when you play football. It happens. It happens. And it's okay. Um, honestly, uh, it it wouldn't be real if it didn't happen because it happens to us. We get in the cage and we go to town. It just is. And it's honest and true. And even for children, and I'm going to tell you what, the children love watching me fight. Children do. And after my fights, if I'm bloody or not, I'll actually go and I'll talk to the children. I'll say, <laughs> how's it going? And I'll shake their hands. And if I have if I have any lollipops or anything on me and the parents say they can have one, I, get, I give them a lollipop. And I let the kids know that everything is awesome and you should follow your dreams no matter what that dream is or what it looks like to other people. Now, what about the fact that they just censor everything? How do you feel about that? I think that real life um, in athletics shouldn't be censored. I think that certain things can be left out, which is a form of censorship. Like, okay, in MMA, people will break their knees and their legs and 
arms and all of that. Um, and that happens. And for a lot of people, even myself, you know, who deals with that regularly, it is not something you want to look at. Right. It isn't. It makes me I, like can feel it in my own body, even though it didn't just happen to me. Like I empathize that much. It is hard to see. Um, I think that shutting the camera, going to a different angle, you know, that's great. That to me is good producing. That is good directing. That is a very good cameraman thinking about that. I mean, but you also have to have somebody capturing the truth at the same time. And you can edit it. You got a clean version. You got the version that's raw and out there, you know. And I've been fortunate enough to work with enough promotions where we've had some really good camera crews. Well, you brought up a good point, but I do want to ask you. But let's say you're in a fight and you're covered in blood, but they refuse you to put you on camera. Would you get mad at that? Well... I wouldn't get mad. It's actually, I'm one of those people that doesn't get mad about too much. I can be disappointed, but I like a challenge. So (laughs) I will find a way to be graceful enough to see about compromise. No, I agree. Now, I'm a big wrestling fan. And back in 1999, May 24th, 1999, there was an accident of her Owen Hart fell from the ceiling. And when they were alive on the air, JR said, we're not going to show the ring. We're only going to pan to the cloud. Yeah. Now, the question I want to ask you, as you mentioned, there's two cameras. Oh, and there's more. Well, uh, hypothetically, hypothetically speaking. Yeah. <laughs> do you think there was a camera on the ring that showed everything about what's going on? There had to have been. I'm sure everybody had a camera out. Well, this was 1999, and there were no cell phones at the time. Imagine if there was a different time, but... Oh, are... cell phones aren't all the cameras. I remember little, little... uh, What was the smallest camera I ever owned? I used it for concerts and all kinds of stuff, and I would get all kinds of pics. <laughs> there were people taking pics, believe yes. you me. No, absolutely. I, I've seen the pictures. But do you in not let me ask you in a different way with everything okay. going on with uh, Vince McMahon? Okay. Do you and it, he's not perfect, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, he's a piece of shit. Uh, but with that being said, I am thankful for what he gave us. He gave us Hulk Hogan, mm-hmm. he gave us WrestleMania, he yeah. gave us entertainment. Now, that doesn't excuse what he does in his free time. No. Not by any stretch of imagination. No. You can say the same thing about Walt Disney. Walt Disney gave us Mickey Mouse. He gave us Dumbo. He gave us Jumbo Bug. But Walt Disney also was a Nazi, and he was a Nazi sympathizer. And, you know, you can say the same thing about Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and Stephen Hawkins and all yeah. these great people. But... Do you think the bad outweighs the good? Oh, I always believe that good outweighs the bad. Anybody, even with the most dark of hearts, can see light where light shines. Now, I agree. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But then the first one I want to ask you is social media. How can your fans follow you on social media? Oh, wow. Okay, so people ask me all the time, why don't you have a fan page? You know, and I get that. Um, The reason I don't have a fan page, even though I've been fighting and promoting since 2009, is because I would rather connect personally with people. And I make it real easy. I have my my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter. And if you want to Facebook me and message me that way, I would love to speak with anybody who has a need, has a talent that they're searching to find use for, anyone that wants to sponsor or work with uh, any anyone that I work with. I'm all about bringing people together. You call me, I will hook you up with the right people because I'm really good at delegating my authority and I will connect you with exactly what you need. And um, also... Um, if, if uh, you know, uh, you want to 
go ahead and if I don't know if, if you're able to, but you can actually, if I can send you my Facebook link, my Instagram, my Twitter, and you can post that and people can connect. Yeah, with absolutely. That. It will be in the description. All your social medias will be in the description. But I do have a couple questions for you off the air. Yeah. So wrapping up our interview segment, it was a real honor and privilege to have me as a guest. I'm looking forward to part two. And this is not the end of the episode. Oh, well, it is the end of the episode. But stay tuned. When we're done here, go to Instagram and TikTok for the sit down with Keith Andrew when we come back from this commercial break. But when, but before we get to that, it was an honor and privilege having me as a guest. I'm looking Thank forward you. to part two. And make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment because we would like to hear from you. Until we meet again, catch you later. Thank you and have a good night. Mm-hmm.